Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Lair Belair. Today I wanted to share this project that I just put together. This is a unicorn horn. So last year I put together unicorn horn, but I used Maya 3D from Autodesk and it was using nonlinear deformers and it's basically polygon modeling. So what I want to do is challenge myself to figure out a way how to do it with Fusion 360 using uh, solid modeling. So I came up with this method and I just wanted to share it with you guys. Maybe this could help you out in, in a project because uh, there's some kind of interesting techniques. So let's go through that now. So the first thing you want to do is figure out uh, what do you want to put in the unicorn. It could be, of course, just regular unicorn, but I got uh, some NeoPixel rings. So if you go to adafruit.com slash NeoPixel, you can find a lot of different NeoPixels, NeoPixel rings. So I got this one here. This is a 12 inch or a 12, a 12 X NeoPixel ring. So there's 12 RGB LEDs. And this has an outer diameter of 37 millimeters. So I'm going to use that as my thing, as my base. So I will create a new design right here, and we'll start off with that. So the first thing I'll do is I'll grab my circle tool, I'll draw on the floor plane, and I'll click and drag this out and type in uh, 37. Let's do 38, just to have a little bit of wiggle room. So 38 seems right. It was 38, right? Yes, of course. So now I'm going to hit stop sketch, and that's going to be sort of our reference. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go under create and coil. So this is actually what's going to make our spiral. So it's telling me where do you want to um, draw. So I'm going to draw on that sketch that I just drew. And then I'll click out, and I'll be able to hopefully get that in there. It doesn't want to snap for some reason. So I'm just going to type in 37 or 38. <laughs> You can see I put 28, but you know what? We got this coil profile panel, coil panel. So I'm going to change all the all the stuff in here. So it was 38. And what we want to do is we want to make sure we're under height and pitch. That way we can control the height of this thing. And the height of the unicorn horn can be whatever you want. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it 150 because that's the max height of my 3D printer. And you'll see I got an error here. It says can't do it. So I'm going to zero out some of these things. And that's basically a coil, right? Regular coil. I'm going to make the section size down to two millimeters, which kind of doesn't matter, but we're going to put two just to keep it there. And if you look at this handle here, this is actually a taper. And if I zoom all the way out, you can see what it's doing. It's tapering out our coil. And if we bring it in, we can get it to taper inwards as if it was a tree or some sort of horn with a, with a tapered edge, right? A tapered tip. So I'm going to put in something like six. I think six is a good number. And then this arrow here will give us a, 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 a lower pitch with a higher value, if that makes sense. So I'm going to bring this in to coil about that much. I think that, or maybe a little bit more. Yeah, maybe that'll be okay. So something like that. Um, so once we're happy with uh, our, our sort of spiral that we're going to get, we'll hit OK. And one thing is that that's, the, the, like I said, the section side doesn't really matter because we're not actually using this solid in the design. All we really want from here is this line. This line here is what we're going to use to make a loft. This is going to be our center line to loft from one profile to a top profile here. So now that we have that, what we'll do is we'll create our profiles to create our loft for the spiral. So I'm going to click on the circle thing. And I'm going to work on this uh, edge here, or this plane here, which is the front, I guess. So the next thing we want to do is, before I even start drawing, I'm going to right click, or actually up here under Sketch. We'll go to Project and Include, and then say uh, Include 3D Geometry. And when I click on that, now I can actually um, reference this line from our coil. So when I click on that, if I hide the coil now, you can see I have this um, the spiral, right? And if you look, when we rotate, it's actually 3D. So this is now a 3D sketch. So we're going to use this again to create our, um, we're going to use this as our center line to create a, a, a loft. So the next thing I'm going to do is go back to the circle tool. And now I can actually click on this point here and use that as a center point, <clears throat> excuse me, for our bottom, uh, our bottom profile. So I'm going to hit 10 millimeters. This can be any number you want, but I found 10 millimeters to be okay. And then I'll make another circle right here, and I'll make this a little bit small. Let's make it five, or actually, yeah, five millimeters should be okay. So that's cool. So now we got that. 
So now I can hit stop sketch and you can see on our sketches we have this as one sketch. So we got the coil with the two profiles and then our base bottom here, which is just for reference. So cool, now at this point we can actually create our loft. But instead of creating it as a solid inside here, you know, under create, we got loft. Where's that loft? Where are you hiding? There it is. We're actually gonna create a form inside the sculpt environment. So once we click on that create form button, we're in the work, we're in the workspace of sculpting. And under create, we have the loft ability. So we're gonna loft. So the first thing I'll do is I have profiles uh, selected here. So like, so I can click on this guy. And then I'm gonna change my guide type to center line by clicking that. And now I can select this uh, 3D sketch of our coil, our spiral. So now that's selected. And what I'll do is under here where it says length, length spacing faces, I have eight faces. So watch what happens if I click on profile, right? And then select this one. It's gonna loft between it, but it's not gonna do such a good job. And that's, <laughs> that looks funny. And that's just because we don't have enough faces. So I'm gonna crank this up to 80 faces and then bammy, we get this beautiful, um, <laughs> this, this really nice spiral. So that's cool. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now we have, if we open up our bodies, we have this sort of patch thing. It's not a solid yet, so we need to make it a solid because it's hollow, it's, it's hollow. It's just, uh, they're just faces. So what we're gonna do to close this off is you can click on these edges here but instead of like shift selecting all, I can just double click on it and it'll, it'll create a loop for me. So now with that selected, I can right click and click and select fill hole. And this will fill in that hole. So I have a couple of fill modes, but I found the best nicest one to be uh, fill star. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now you get this nice uh, sort of beveled uh, bottom, beveled tip, I guess you can call it. And then we'll do the same for the top. So again, just double click on one of those, right click, fill hole and it fills in the hole. Whoa, hit okay, because I know it's all good. So there we go, now we have our lovely spiral. So I'm gonna hit finish form, and what's gonna happen is Fusion's going to convert that into a body. So now this is a body, I can use this in our design, and that's, our, that's half of the tutorial. It's our spiral that's tapered and nice looking. And the reason why we didn't use why we couldn't do this with coil is because coil just can't do that loft where it like makes it go fat at the bottom and thinner at the top. You just can't do that. But we can use this we can use that sketch uh, from it. So that's why we have. It. So we have our coil here, you know, and we have our awesome spiral here. So cool. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our cone. So to create the cone, I need to make a sketch. Uh, since we got our bottom sketch already, we're going to use that but I would need to make a sketch up here somewhere to be, our, to be our tip, right? So what I'm gonna do is I need to sketch up here and I don't wanna sketch at the bottom. So what we can use is a construct offset plane. And what this lets you do is to create an offset or it makes you create a work plane um, offsetted from a certain plane or a certain face. So I'm gonna click on this bottom and then this arrow appears. So now if we drag it up, you can see I am offsetting the plane. So I'm gonna bring this all the way up maybe 155, uh, and that is gonna ex exceed our, our Z height on our printer, but we're gonna reduce it a little bit at the bottom anyway, and I'll show you that in, after the tutorial, or, you know, in the end of the tutorial. So that's a good height. So I'm gonna click OK, and now I will select my circle tool again, and then click on this guy here. So now I'm working on the top of the spiral, or a little bit over it, and I'm gonna click in the center, and then I'm gonna put uh, maybe five millimeters and then I'll hit okay. And then at this point I can hit stop sketch. So that's what we have. Cool. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another form. Let me get rid of this guy. Remind me tomorrow. I know I have updates. Just let me live my life. So I'm gonna click on create form. And now I'm gonna to go to create and loft. So we're gonna create a loft from this bottom circle to this top circle. And it creates a loft for me. And that looks pretty basic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, use the width spacing, width spacing here, and I'm gonna add 10 faces instead of eight. So it just gives me a little bit more geometry to work with. And then that's pretty much it. I'll hit okay. 
Again, we need to close this stuff off. So using the same technique we did last time, I'll double click, right click, fill hole, and it should be a fill star. Makes it nice and uh, beveled edge. And there we go. We don't want to do the bottom though yet. We don't want to do that bottom yet. So what I'm going to do next is, you know, this looks pretty flat, not very interesting. So what we can do is we can puffer these out. I want to make like puffy sections to make it look more like a horn, like a horn, right? Like an organic horn. So what I'll do is I'll click on, you click on one of these guys and double click and it selects the whole ring. And then if I click on modify edit form, if I select, if I click and drag this, I can puff it out by kind of scaling that edge. So I'm going to do that and then I'll click away and then I'll skip this one and go straight to this one and then puff that edge out like that, maybe not so much. And we can, we can type in a value here. So I can put 1.2, seems to be good. I'll hit enter. Oops, I didn't want to hit enter. I wanted to stay in that edit form, but that's okay. We can just click edit form again, skip this one, go to this one, scale, type in the value, hit enter, <laughs> do it again. And I have the habit of, habit of just hitting enter. So that, oops, I'm, I'm doing the wrong thing. I was actually moving it and not scaling it. So just be wary of what, what, what's going on there. Click away. And then I guess maybe I don't want to do that one. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is all those ones that I left. Oh, I'll hit OK here to close out the edit form. What I want to do next is I want to actually select the, the edge loops that I didn't puffer. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to crease them. So I can hit right click and then crease. And this is going to give me a hard edge or, you know, a crease, right? right? That's the word. <laughs> so now I got this cool kind of puffered look. And that looks a lot like a unicorn horn. So I'll, oh, before I finish the form, I, I'm still not a solid. And if I click exit, it's not going to fill it in for me. So instead of filling this, I actually want to have it be hollow, right? Because I want to fit a NeoPixel ring in there. So what I'll do is I'll go under Create, or maybe it's Modify. And then there's this thing called Thicken. And that's a lot like a shell, but it'll just thicken out a, uh, a face here. So I'll click on that, and you get sort of a, a preview of it. And I, luckily, it's already got a uh, my value that I want. I want negative 1% because I want it to go inside itself, right? So I'm making a, sh a, a, a thicken from the inside. And I'm going to leave the thicken type at sharp in the direction normal, and that's all good. So I'll hit OK. And it'll thicken that. So now I have a solid... <laughs> A, a solid, solid, a solid body. So at this point, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit finish form. And now we have two bodies. We have our spiral and we have our horn. And they're, uh, they're intersecting with each other. So to fix that, we actually want to do a couple things. So one thing I wanna point out is our thicken actually isn't perfect, perfectly flat. So if I click on this edge, and then go to this face. You can see it's not perfectly flat. So what I want to do is I actually want to shave off some material here. And to do that, I will open up our origins. So you can see our three planes. And I'm going to create another offset plane by clicking on that button there. And then I'll click on that. And remember how we made it 155? Well, I'm going to bring this up by 5. Because then I can cut everything out using that plane. And then it'll basically be the right size we want it to be. So now that I have that plane selected um, or created, I can click on split body. So what body do I want to split? The horn. And my splitting tool will be that offsetted plane that we made. Again, origins popped up, so I need to hide it so I don't get confused. And now I got that offsetted plane of, of five millimeters of an offset. So I can preview it and that's how I want it. So I'll hit okay. And now I've split that body. So I got this excess here. I can right click on it in the browser and hit remove. You don't want to hit delete, just hit remove. It's way better to remove than delete. And then we can do the same thing for this spiral. So I'll go split body, select that, and select. It always, op it always opens up origins automatically. And my construction plane is right there. So hit OK. So I got this little area here. I'll select it so I can see what it is here. It's body two. Remove. And now we got a perfectly flat bottom. So the next thing I want to do is you'll see that it's intersecting with itself here. This, this spiral is intersecting with the horn. So one day to, to fix that, since I want to 3D print it, is uh, in two colors. 
It's gonna be a dual print, by the way. <laughs> I'm gonna split this coil from the horn. And if you're not careful, you could select just one uh, face, but I'm gonna move my cursor until it selects the whole body, the whole horn, and then I'll hit okay. So it's gonna split that. And I'll be left with a couple things. So I'll hide the horn, which is this body, and I'm left with this inner area here and this, this sort of inside area. So I'll remove these like that. And what was this one? We'll remove that as well. And I still have something here. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, looks like we have an extra bit here. This bit, whatever that is, we'll remove that as well. So now if I bring back the horn, you can see I got, eh, it's home. Now you can see I got my two bodies here. So cool. So I'll hide the horn again just to show you that we made it nice and clean so that the, it's the exact shape of the horn, or at least the inside of, of the sp spiral is. So cool, so now we got these two shapes. Now you'll notice that you know, we should have probably brought in this a little bit. Might be a little bit of an overhang issue. If you look at the horn I made, I have it more on the inside. And you know, you can adjust that by adjusting uh, the position of the, of the profile to make it go inward more which I should have done, but there you go. This is just a tutorial. And another thing I'll leave out of the tutorial, but I'll show you guys, is I actually created uh, these little tabs at the bottom, and that was just creating a sketch and then making sure that I merged it to the bottom and then I rotated it so it's not touching this spiral. So these are gonna be used so that I can actually attach it to like a headband or some rubber bands or sew it, those type of things. So that's why I have those tabs at the bottom. But I didn't add it here, just for uh, you know, for time saving stuff. So at this point, I got these two solids. So now let me show you in Simplify 3D how to bring them in and how to set it up. So what I'll do is I'll right click on the body eight and save it as an STL. I don't want to save it to my desktop or anything, so I'm just going to send it straight to the the slicer. This is Simplify 3D. So I got that piece, and then I'll do body four, which is our horn. Right click, save as, send it straight to there. So the first thing we want to do is we want to select these two in the model window, and then I'll go to align selected model origins, and that'll just move it so that they're both perfectly aligned with each other. All right. And then I'll come up to tools and hit dual extrusion wizard. And Simplify 3D has a built-in wizard where you can choose a base profile template. I'll select the BCN 3D Sigma because that one is uh, the printer we're going to be using. And at this point, you want to figure out what, obviously, if you saved it as an STL, save it to your desktop. I'm just doing it really quick. So I don't know what is what. I don't know what, you know, if you have black on your left extruder and you want the spiral to be black, then you want to make sure you fix that accordingly. So I'll just hit OK for now. And then down here under processes, you can uh, modify your settings as you like. And what I'll do is I'll put zero infill because I want it nice and zeroed out. And that's it, that's all I'll do here. You know, you can play with the settings as you, as you want to. Could be a different printer, it could be a Flash Forge, whatever. But this shows you that I now have, um, under coloring, I have active tool head, and I have color one and color two. And you can see it's set up properly. So that's cool. So this is all nice and good. Nice and hollow, look at that. I got a, a nice brim. And what's cool about this is that, uh, we talked about this earlier today on 3D Hangouts, um, that we were able to print this on the Sigma BCN 3D with no ooze shield, no pillars, no support material, very, very clean print, dual extruded print without uh, said stuff. So that is really cool. It's nice and clean. Really good example that shows how independent dual extruders are just awesome for dual extrusion prints. So that's about all I wanted to cover in the project. If you guys have a BCN 3D and you want to check out our, our profile, you can go to uh, github.com slash adafruit uh, slash printer dash profiles. And I'll link this below, obviously, in the video. And we have quite a few of them. BCN is the new addition to our little profile repo. But there you go. That's it. I hope you guys find this useful. Um, this was really interesting uh, challenge to figure out how to, how to do this. But there's a couple little, excuse me, cool things in here, like uh, projecting uh, 3D geom 3D geometry into a, into a 2D sketch and um, using lofts and 
uh, editing forms and stuff. So it's kind of cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought in the, in the, of the tutorial in the link below. And uh, yeah, remember guys uh, to keep on catting. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.